The first storm on part two of our storm summaries was Major Hurricane Danny, which formed in the middle of August and became a surprise Category 3 hurricane in the Atlantic. Just about made it to the Lesser Antilles, um, just as it was dissipating really, but it was a surprise that it managed to do what it did. Look how compact it was as well on this satellite imagery when it became that Category 3 storm. And then it's weakening trends that approach those islands, causing some heavy rainfall over Guadeloupe um, and Antigua and other associated islands in the area. Here's some one minute imagery of the storm's progression, looking rather good there too. Our next storm was Erica, which peaked with only winds of 50 miles an hour, but caused a lot of damage, 403 million actually, and over 35 fatalities, mainly um, in St. Lucia, where heavy rain and, uh, caused significant flooding and killed lots of people there. Then we had Fred, which was an 85 mile an hour hurricane, another bit of a shock really, forming to the east, um, near the east coast of Africa, passing through the Cape Verde Islands, and then moving on towards the northwest. It too was a deadly storm, killing nine and caused over a million dollars of damages as it passed through those islands. Then it was Tropical Storm Ayune, uh, which formed in July to the south of Hawaii and became a short-lived tropical storm. Not much more to say apart from that. Then Hurricane Dolores, becoming a strong Category 4 with wind speeds of 130 miles an hour, not too far from the Mexican coast in its earlier stages, but didn't cause any fatalities or dam any damages indeed. And then Felicia formed just after that, near the end of July, didn't do much at all, very weak tropical storm, 40 miles an hour, very forgettable. And then we went on to Hurricane Guillermo, uh, which became a Category 2 storm, a strong Cat 2, in the beginning of August and just about reached Hawaii, just to the north of that, and Hilda followed right behind that as well in early August, and that became a Category 4, um, dissipating to the south of Hawaii. There it is reaching its peak, and then moving towards the west-northwest. Another compact storm there as well, and you can see it on the bottom right of your image there as a naked uh, storm in its final stages there. Then in the North Indian Ocean, in the Arabian Sea, we had Tropical Storm Ashobar, which caused minimal damages in the end, despite threatening the Arabian, and the Arabian Peninsula. And now we move on to the West Pack and Tropical Storm Bavi, which formed in March and tracked pretty much directly over Guam and caused a million dollars of damages on the Mariana Islands. There's the storm passing through, you couldn't really see much of it because it was rather weak. And then a giant super typhoon Maysac arrived with peak wind speeds of 160 miles an hour, a pressure of 910 millibars passing through the Micronesian islands, a very strong storm indeed, um, and arrived in the Philippines eventually, uh, caused quite a bit of damage. 8.5 million in fact, and five fatalities throughout its course. Then in May we had Super Typhoon Newell which grazed the east coast of the Philippines as a Category 5 storm and passed through the Japanese islands as a Cat 1. Um, another strong storm that affected the area, look at that picture, that says it all. This storm even more damaging, $23.5 million was the cost and it did only cause two fatalities but that's still too, too many. And then we had Super Typhoon Dolphin, another Category 5, with a pressure of 925 millibars. Caused $10 million of damages when it passed through the Mariana Islands and beyond. And there it is at peak intensity just after it passed through. And here's an interesting graphic showing what the storm looked like on a more lateral perspective with that eye, that gaping hole in the middle of the storm. Fantastic imagery. And here's some more fantastic imagery from the Himawari 8 satellite to see Dolphin's progression as it churned through the West Pacific. And let's not forget that even the weaker storms can cause significant amounts of misery as well. Top tropical storm Kajira did just that when it made landfall on Hainan Island in China and then onto Vietnam where it caused $16.6 .6 million of damages and a total of 9 fatalities even though its peak wind speed was only 50 miles an hour.